are Ham Radio. Welcome back, everybody. It's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and we're here with more stuff All Star, right? Hey, let's uh, let's get some questions answered. I have been getting a lot of questions about, hey, I can't quite set up my Hotspot Radio's node or my Shari node from Kits for Hams, and I'm having issues programming that SA818 chip. Well, I'll do a few videos on that, but we're going to start with the Hotspot Radio's HSR repeater, the little mini repeater you see right here. This is a nifty little device. Now, these antennas that I have on here are aftermarket. I usually have this in my truck hooked to external antennas because I'm playing around with a few things, and I misplaced the tiny little antennas that come with it. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with those, but I wanted a little bit more range. I'm kind of testing its limits, if, if you will. But I need to reprogram my repeater frequencies because I re recently programmed an actual repeater to the same frequencies, and I need to change it. So I thought, what better time to go through the setup with all of you? So let's do that, okay? So I've already popped in an SD card into the machine here, and we'll burn a new image. Let's start there. Okay, so we're here at our Raspberry Pi imager, and the first thing we're gonna do is choose device, and this particular instance is going to be Raspberry Pi 4. And we're gonna choose the OS, and as you know, we're gonna go down to the custom and pull out our All-Star Link image. At the time of this video, it's 3.0.17. And we'll choose our storage. And you want to be very careful here because I have some plugged in external hard drives and you don't want to do those. But I do want to do this 16 gig card here. I'm going to hit next. And yes, I want to apply some customi customized settings. So we're going to name this node 576331. I'm going to call the username KD5FMU and we'll give it a secret, super secret password. That is not that one. We'll configure the Wi-Fi. I can show it to you there because I've showed this off before, but we're not in Great Britain. We are in the U.S. So you want to change that country code so that it understands the frequencies the way you like them to be understood, like to your own country and whatnot. And we'll choose U.S. and we'll set our location. I am in the time zone for America, Chicago in the United States. And as far as services, I want to enable SSH and use password authentication. And I want to leave these options as they are. Hit save and say yes and yes. And we'll let this burn this new image. Okay, now it's done and we can pull the SD card out of the reader. And we'll pop it back into the Raspberry Pi. Be right back. Okay, now plug this in here and as you can see it's powering up I better get a walkie on that channel okay so it may not key up yet until we get some things figured out but we've got to wait for our node to boot up so let's get back over to the computer so we did node 576331 so 576331 dot local and this is going to look a little bit big deal because I have the resolution enlarged so that you can see it better. So we'll go to the web admin portal here and say, hey, yeah, it's okay that, uh, no, that it's okay. We go look at everything because we know where this is coming from. We trust it because it's on our local computer. We'll type in our credentials. And there we are logged in. And I want to show you this just real quick on the overhead. The little green light is heart beating. It means it's talking to the Raspberry Pi in a way that it's comfortable. We've got to do some configuration. So let's go to terminal. Now that we're back to the terminal, we're going to type in sudo asl-menu. It doesn't like the high resolution. So now we've got node settings and we're going to set up our initial node. All star node setup menu. We're going to go 576331. Hit enter. Type in the node password. Now, well, here's where some people struggle. What do I choose here? Why do I choose that? Well, I always choose on a regular simplex link hotspot half duplex with courtesy tones. But this little machine is a repeater. Now, if you were doing a Shari Pi hat, yes, pick hotspot half duplex with courtesy tones. If you don't want courtesy tones, choose hotspot half duplex with no courtesy tones. 
but this is a repeater. So we're choosing repeater or full duplex hotspot, which is exactly what this is. So we're choosing that and I'm gonna choose simple USB and then I'm gonna enter my call sign. Restart asterisk, Get keys up and we're into the CLI menu so we can tune our hotspot. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the letter J to no. Hit W to write it. And I'm going to key up my node here and see if that worked. It usually does. I'm almost sure of it. But as you can tell, it's keying up the repeater now. I apologize for all the QRM, but something in here just hates this frequency, which is why I'm changing it. So now we can key the repeater. All right, back to the nuts and bolts. All right, so let's do a quick little tune. We're going to hit number two here and test and see if we can get our settings right, our audio settings. K85 FMU. Looked like it was in a good spot to me. We're going to leave it that way for now, but you adjust it to the way you want it. But I think right out of the bag, it's actually pretty good where it is. So I'm going to hit W and write that. And I'm going to hit zero to exit. Okay, so we've got our node working. And we want to go in and let's just go test Almon 3. And we can log in real quick with the default credentials, Almon 3 and password for password. See that we're successful. And we'll try to link to the Parrot node. And we're connected to the parrot node, as you can tell right here. So let's do a quick audio test. K85 FMU testing one, two, three. Audio level is low. K85 FMU testing one, two, three. Got a lot of QRM here too, it won't be perfect, but you gotta get the audio levels set to where you want them. But that's not exactly why we're here. We've got a basic setup already going. So let's disconnect from the parrot node. You can do that really quick click in there, hit execute, and you're done. Node five, 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 three, disconnected. So let's focus on changing the programming. Let's focus on changing the programming for the SA818 chips on the repeater. We have one for transmit, we have one for receive. So how do we do that? Well, let's get down to it. Let me see if I can get zoomed in here. As you can see, right here is a toggle switch. This is the transmit chip. This is the receive chip. These are two separate SA818 radios. This switch has to be switched towards the chip that you're programming. When you're done, it doesn't matter what position you leave it in, just as long as you get both of them done before you finish. So. Let me back out just a little bit here. The first thing you want to do, we got to get this to where it will program. So we're going to pull that USB cable that came with it. Our little toggle switch is on the transmit side, but we're going to flip this cord over. Oh, look, it says program on it. This puts this in programming mode. And you plug it back in. Now, when you notice, when you plug it back in, the blue light comes back on, but no more heartbeat light, no more transmit light, because now it's acting as a serial device so that it can program these chips. So let's get back to our, and we'll go back into the node. We're going to get back into our node here. And from the terminal, we're going to type in sudo sa818-menu. And this is the menu we're going to use to program our transmit chip and our receive chip. But we do it one at a time. So you see the default is VHF. We're going to hit the down arrow once, hit the space bar, choose UHF because these are UHF chips. 
We're going to leave that in wide mode. So what am I going to set the receive frequency for? Well, this is the transmit chip, but we're going to set them both, transmit and receive, for this chip as the same. The transmit, let's go with, so let's go with 444.5. Let's go enter, and we need four digits after, so we're going to go 444.500. Hit OK. See, the transmit automatically changed to it. We're going to change the squelch value to 3. We're going to change the volume to 8. Sub-audible tone. I do want a sub-audible, so we're going to go to CTCSS. And then we're going to choose the receive CTCS tone here, and I want 100.0. But as I hit the down arrow here, I can't see the asterisk, so I've got to get that red in there first by hitting tab. Then I'm going to start hitting 1, 2, 3, 4, hit space. Oh, there I'm at 77. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, space, I'm at 91. So I need to go 1, 2, 3, space, and there I am at 100.0. Tab over to OK, hit OK. And it automatically changes the transmit CTCSS tone to the same. I haven't been able to differentiate the two or turn one off and one on. Just the way the firmware is set up, I believe. More on that as I get it. CTCSS reverse burst tail tone. We're going to hit as closed. Pre de emphasis. I believe we want enable. Uh, high pass filter disable. I'm sorry. And then low pass is disabled. We're going to leave serial port at default and connection speed at default. And we're going to tab down to update and hit enter. And let's see what the menu tells us. Progressing through the settings, SA818 update is complete. Awesome. That's good news. So what do we do now? So we're going to come over here and we're going to flip our switch over to the receive side. Let's go right back to our computer. Hit the up arrow. Let's go back to this again. Now we need to put in our receive frequency. And since this is a repeater, this is opposite of how you're going to program it into a walkie. So now it's going to be 449.5000. For both squelch and volume will stay the same CTCS codes will stay the same all of this stays the same we're going to tab down to update exit hit enter and we'll let this progress through its programming progression and it is done so what do we do now let's go back to our computer here Disconnect, and I'm gonna. Before I do, I want to change the frequencies in my radio here to 444.500, and it automatically set for an offset. And my tone for this is already set for that as well. Let's plug this back in. We're gonna turn that program word back down. Plug our node back in, and look. It starts heart beating already. So let's key up on our radio and see if it takes. And it did. We're on the new frequency. So that default hang time bugs the crap out of me. It's a default, so I like to go in and change that. So we can jump right back into the ASL setup menu and go to expert configuration menu and edit rpt.comp file and we're already there so we don't have to type a bunch of stuff we can just jump right to it and i'm going to scroll down here past the template into the actual nodes settings which is right here 576331 i'm going to give it a little space here and i like to type in hang time well let's give it about a 750 and then we're going to type in weight times space equals space and we're going to go weight dash times our weight times will equal weight dash times now let's page back down to weight dash times stanza and i know these values are high but i'm going to set them for about six Actually, let's go 750. Let's see what happens. 
It's a little bit different with a full duplex repeater. Control X, yes to save, enter to exit, and we're gonna go down here and restart the asterisk server. Okay, so let's see what it sounds like this time. Let's get that volume turned up. Much better. Much, much better. And you could tweak that as you wish. So there you are. We have set up and configured hotspot radios, HSR, do repeater. I call it the mini repeater. It's just so nifty. Fits right into my truck. I'm actually going to put a new Pi 5 onto it with an NVMe. Hatboard Pi uh, drive on it, Hatboard drive on it, so that I can store some files as well that I'll have on the go if I don't have internet. But it's configured, y'all. It's just that easy. And programming the transmit and receive chips is as well. So the Hotspot Radio's mini repeater is Neato Mosquito. I enjoy all their products. I am used to using their, their USB sound fob with radios, with actual mobile radios for all star nodes. Uh, the little USB dongle, it's an SA8, SA818 chip on an antenna that USBs into the Raspberry Pi is super nifty neato, compact, one watt, it works, it just works. They're good products, y'all. Don't get me wrong, Kits for Hams products are very good too. I love their products. As a matter of fact, be dabbling in it more in the future. I'm going to start a review series of different All Star Link nodes, portable and stationary, sound fobs that interact with the Raspberry Pis and the radios, all kinds of stuff. I love All Star Link and I want you to be well informed on what you choose for your application. So, thank you for supporting the channel here at the Ham Radio Crusader YouTube channel. I appreciate everything you do. Please consider becoming a channel member. It helps us grow and move forward to bring more new and exciting content for you, the viewer, here on the Ham Radio Crusader YouTube channel. Hey everybody, it's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and I want to wish you 73s. May all the good signals be yours, and ham on, y'all.